I am born in China and、uh, grew up in China until I was 25. In 1986, I went to the United States, study astrophysics, trying to get my PhD degree. As I was being introduced 25 years ago, when the events, the getting togetherness, the demand for democracy from the Chinese people, breaking out in Tiananmen Square. At the city, so my home, Beijing. It has been almost 25 years, and I have not been returned to China after that. My trip in June 1989 back to China, and then came out, became a full-time human rights activist for more than a decade, and now I'm teaching. In America University, but I don't want to share my personal story with you. I rather share my work, which is the story of Chinese internet. It's not about a tragedy in the past, but it's a hope for the future. Chinese internet has been also has 20 years history. That was April 20, 1994. That China was first time fully connected to the internet. Twenty years has passed. What has internet do to Chinese society? I can only watch from afar, but my observation and also the participation through the online media. Tell me something I want to share with you. The first is a word called "internet." Unfortunately, it's a negative word because internet in China has never been free. The censorship of the state has been there in the day one, and not only surveillance and censorship. And the regulations on all the domestic internet companies, but also at the national gateway of the internet of information traffic, there is something we call the Great Firewall, which blocks access of Chinese people to YouTube, to Twitter, to Blogger, to Facebook. This. What I call the internet phenomena is very important to tell us. Even after 20 years, China is becoming a growing economic power in the globalization world. Even the Chinese goods are everywhere. The Chinese people are traveling many places. The social freedom and economic freedom has gained in China, but there is a severe limit. On their political rights, freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of beliefs, freedom of assembling, just like 25 years ago. So the internet is always a reminder that Chinese people are not free. But that's not the story I want to tell you, because despite Of all the censorship, the Chinese internet users today there are 600 million of them and more growing. I find all kind of ways in this new communication space to disseminate information, to share the stories, to socialize, to interact with each other, to raise questions to the authority, and to share ideas and hope. And participate in public affairs, despite of the censorship. And how does this happen? Does people personally in danger? Some people do, but by the large number of people express themselves, the individually the risk is much lower on the internet. It's not like you're working for the newspaper. If you write an article that your editor doesn't approve, a you don't get it published. B 
your job is at risk, to say the least. If you want to individually promoting a book or a pamphlet on the street, or calling people get together, you may get arrested. But online, if you express your opinion, if you make a political joke, you participate in some of public discussion, the risk is much lower. Yes, your post, your blog may be deleted, but that doesn't stop people continue to speak out and speak to each other, because in there, you can find the people, share your opinions, share your ideas, and share your value. So the story I was going to tell is fart people. This is not even a real Chinese character. It's a made-up character. It's a new word in the Chinese political lingo called fart people. What is fart people? How did this word come from? And I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story happening on the internet, but actually a story happening in the real life. This is October 29th, 2008, in a seafood restaurant in Shenzhen. A Chinese Communist Party official was having a meal there, and in the middle of it, he walked uh, up and he asked an 11 years girl in the restaurant who was eating in another table, saying, uh, where is the direction of the men's room? The girl showed her the direction, and he said, could you walk with me to the, to the, to the men's room? The girl walked with him towards that corner of the men's room, and he started grabbing the girl. The girl escaped, ran back to her parents, and her parents stood up and confronted the official, what did you try to do to my daughter? And the official pointed to the father and yelled at him, do you understand? I'm sent here by the Ministry of Transportation. I'm the same rank as your mayor. Yes, I did grab her neck, so what? You people are farts to me. Do you want to test what I can do to you? This episode was captured by security camera and later leaked on the internet. It went viral. It's a public opinion storm in the Chinese cyberspace. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of messages outreached, angry messages to the official, of course. And even censorship cannot stop that. And a Chinese newspaper has to print the story, the official being sacked. But after this, a new word is born among the Chinese active internet users. Oh, in his eyes, we are fart. We are actually a fart people. Because every day in Chinese life, you see the government building, there are the slogans that serve the people. There's on the TV, the government officials talking about people are masters of our nation. We are the servant of the people. But in reality, the un uncountable power abuses of the power, arbitrary abuse of power, intrusive abuse of power, pervasive everywhere is Chinese people's daily experience. And there's nothing you can do about that because we didn't vote them in. They're not accountable to us. So this word, far to people, resonates among the Chinese internet users. People realize you know what, this is a truer word than what TV said about us. This is a truer word that tells us what the reality really is. And this is our true political identity in our national political life. Yes, we are fart people. Not only 
people share that resonance, but gradually it transformed its meaning. It becomes a term of regular term. It's become a term of a proud. So a lot of people using that as signature, and there's T-shirts. There are people using this in their speeches all the time, starting with "I'm a fart people." As I described, the reason the fart people as a term resonant and became a new political lingo, and speaking those kind of political languages united peoples and shared feelings and life experiences. It is because in China, there is a lie called "Renmin People." The picture, you know who he is. China's the biggest and most cruel dictator ever in the history. Slogan is "Long live the people." That's what he said on the Tiananmen Square. But People's Republic of China never peoples. Nor a republic, it's a basic lie. People's Liberation Army only exercise their lethal power on the street of Beijing or in Lhasa, Tibet, or Urumqi in Xinjiang, to the ordinary people. So-called People's National Congress today, full of riches and powerfuls, very few puppets of different social classes. Even the Chinese Communist Party itself is a lie because it does nothing about communism anymore. It's more actively promoting some cruel form of a colonial capitalism in China. It's in that kind of a lie, an awakening from that kind of a lie, there is born of what I call the self-awareness of a political status. The rise of a political consciousness of internet users, and awakening to the true political identity, and that is fart people. Well, that's a reality, but what is the hope? People will look for what should we call ourselves if we are not so called the official discourse people. Yes, we fart people, but. Do we have other names? Well, look at China's 5,000 years political history, and look at every single Chinese literature historical document. You find the names to call the people. They call ordinary people, 平民 There's a word called 小民 little people. There's a word called "li min," nameless people, and there's another Chinese word called "cao min," grass people. There's another word. It's called "shu min," common people, and there's another word called "diao min," unruly people. And then there's another word called "bao min," violent people. Finally, ants people. Worthless people. These are all Chinese words. And Chen Min, subjects of a ruler. That's throughout the Chinese history. These are the words to describe people. That's the past. Far the people is the present. It's not far from the past. What is the future? Where is the hope? Here is a new word is born. It's not exactly a new word, but a new word getting popular in the online political speeches. Gongmin, citizenship, citizen. It's a dignified word. It's not only like fart people that keep your distance between you and the party state, but it also implies. These are the individuals who has rights. We're entitled to have freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. And this word is actually written in the Chinese Constitution today. 
It has been written there for 65 years. Of course, the party never delivered. If anyone want to challenge the party, say, was well, this paragraph written in the Constitution? Can we exercise those rights of citizens? The answer is, here is the prison. But this doesn't stop people start thinking. If we truly want to change China, if we want to gain the dignity and the freedom, if we are not happy, discontent with our far people status, then even we do not have those rights in reality, we should strike for it. We should speak out. This is the way we should be. Be a citizen in my own country. Do speak out for public affairs. Do express your opinions. Do associate to advance your common interests. And do get together if there is an issue that governs us. If we cannot do it in the physical spaces for now because of the repressive state apparatus, let's do it online. The story, like the Fart people, went viral. Then another story of government corruption, another story about the children in the rural areas doesn't have the uh, education opportunity because the government didn't deliver what they said they would do. Another story about a individual human lawyer trying to defend his client and being persecuted. All these stories spread out, went viral, and became a new lingo, became new images, and people speaking up and share the values with them become citizens. And this is what's happening in the Chinese internet. As we all know, a network, a movement, they don't have need committees, they don't have national infrastructures. Maybe you have, we have public intellectuals, prominent bloggers, or even social celebrities that, as a spokesperson, that articulate those messages. But most of the time, those kind of internet event, some story went viral, you know, millions of messages overwhelming yeah, the, the social media. There are emergent movement. There are emergent cyber actions. When something resonant among the people, even the powerful internet censors in China cannot fully stop. And that is happening in China today, what I called from the far people to citizens. How does the Chinese state respond to this? Use violence again. They arrest the leader of the citizen movement. They crash on the citizen movement. And this gentleman is a human rights lawyer, Xu Zhiyong, who was last month being sentenced for four years for simply written articles and speaking out for what he's called new citizen movement. Why? Because those movements, those netizens now, they are not only speak up online, they associate, they're getting to know each other. They get together in the real space. Even at this point, they cannot go to the public square, they can go to a restaurant in the city. They can go there physically meet each other. They can go there regularly. They can go there in a fixed time. In many Chinese cities, every last Saturday of a month in a particular restaurant, and those citizen activists will start go there. They call, we just have a social meal. Start from a few, and then a dozen, and some were starting getting hundreds. Yes, the police came, the plane police came, the security came. They trying to get rid of them, they trying to harass the restaurant, and then they try to arrest the leaders, the rest of the activists. Will that work? It works for now. Will that work for a long time? I don't think so. This is what I know. Many, many people live in a lie for some time. And some people can live in a lie for a very long time. 
but no people on earth, not Chinese people, with our ancient, glorious, proud history, not Ukrainians, not Russians, not Tunisians, not Brazilians, not any people can live in a lie for indefinite time. Truth, freedom, dignity will prevail in China with the help of the internet. And this is my last picture. On the up left corner, the little sign in front of all the mouses is a, uh, a symbol of Chinese censorship. It's actually a censorship software. So there was an online movement to get rid of that software. People do not re online revoke. And the sentences there, it's become a, uh, this is online, some netizens art creation, and it became a, uh, a book cover called China's Courageous Bloggers. And here the sentence I translate is my last sentence. It said, 25 years ago, I was not able to stop you. And this time, you are not going to stop me. Thank you.